Hello again, everyone. This is Randy, your sewing machine man. And what we're looking at is the venerable 401A from Singer. My opinion, the best sewing machine ever made by anyone at any time. Now, this little guy came in because this young lady who brought it in, her mother-in-law passed away. But before she did, she made sure everybody knew that she, my customer got this machine because she said that the last guy who worked on it told her, whatever you do, hang on to this. Keep it service, it'll last you forever. Because she said that's what her sewing machine guy told her. Might have been me, could have been anybody else. But whoever told, him, told her that gave her the right, right information. And of course, it came in not looking quite this good. It wasn't trashed or anything like sometimes they usually are. But it came in looking uh, like it needed a little TLC, like it had been sitting for a while. And this is what it started out with right here. Okay, when this one came in, it was locked up to the degree that it wouldn't turn more than about a half a turn. And that's an unusual occurrence because usually it'll get locked up, you know, down here or in a bearing or something. But this one was locked up because up in the top, up inside, right, oh, let's see if we can see it right down in here. In this needle bar swings left and right there's a little piston Let's see if i can see it down under there boy it's hard to see even with some light it'd be hard to see way down inside there's a little piston there and this is for the folks if this already you see it moving back and forth underneath here and a little piston right at the base where my finger is a little piston a little ball there that has to be lubricated that seems shiny down there at the very bottom at the end on the right hand side there's a little ball there and that sits underneath the cam stack here and uh, when it's locked up it doesn't let the cam stack move and it'll go about a quarter turn and stop so these of course were all these are all credit up here and that's just from the old oil it gets to be uh, kind of turned into like a paraffin or a wax on the back now moves up and down and you have to be real gentle with these things they'll snap you can't pry anything and of course the back one moves best when this is on the right and this one moves back best when this is on the left things kind of get out of the way and help things work there a little bit sometimes you rotate it up and this one goes up and down like so and the back Move this over to the right to pull that one in, make it go up and down. A lot of times folks say they, they don't think just won't cooperate. And of course that's center needle position. Center, right, left. So now we got it loosened up. We're gonna get it cleaned up and oiled up and uh, fine-tuned and stitched out. And then we'll get it back to the customer tomorrow. Okay, so that takes care of the getting it all unfrozen and limbered up and ready to go. And then the next thing we need to do is call to your attention before you mess with this uh, bobbin case area. It's just good to know the basics about your bobbin case area. While we're at it, we'll put this uh, bobbin case back in. And it's a good idea to know how to do this if you have a 401 because sometimes it'll pop out. This is your position bracket. It's also involved in the process of setting the thread gap. Underneath down here, there is, down underneath, and here, there's a flat piece of spring steel underneath. And this is tapered on the end. See, it has a little bevel on the left-hand side. It's tapered. So, there you go. So it slides above the screw and underneath the edge and you bring it in about a 45 degree angle and you'll feel it pick up that little piece of flat steel into there and then it locks it down into place it'll snap down in 
on this little post here for the position bracket to be in place. I'm trying to do this in the abstract here, and normally it just snaps right in for me, but of course I'm trying to do this with a camera, so it gets kind of wacky. Okay, this goes underneath. You bring it down, and it snaps right into place on this post here. Now, rarely will this post be out of place, but if it's been adjusted, sometimes people will let it go too far down because it slides up and down. And of course, the adjustment for that, when I set the thread gap, is a screw right there. That is your thread gap screw underneath the slide plate off to the right. That's where the, right there, that little guy right there. You loosen that, and then you can rock this screw. It's on an eccentric. You can rock it back and forth, left and right. And what that does is it affects the thread gap on the bobbin case. And of course, where we put the bobbin case in, we always look to make sure that this area right here is polished off. Because right there, it will erode and get little pits on there where the thread slaps against it. And it'll get rough there. It'll just be jagged. And it will not sew. It'll lock down every time you go. So you have to smooth that off. I use a jeweler's wheel in the shop. Or you can use just emery cloth to do it when you're out in the field. But this little lip here fits in the little slot right there. You always want to clean this out real good and oil it. That little slot right there where my nail is. With its left half of the circle. Of course, make sure everything's at its highest point. Whenever you get anything down here, it's what's not in the way. Put the needle at its highest point. You put the bobbin case in like so. It'll snap in. I'll do this blind behind the camera. And then you snap your bobbin, uh, your position bracket down in place. It snaps down like so. And then your thread gap is this place right there. That's your thread gap. Every time you take a stitch, the bobbin case moves left, right, left, right, left, right. If it doesn't have that movement, if it doesn't have that movement, the thread won't slide through. It's got to have a thread gap here and back up here. So every stitch, it goes like that, back and forth. That's setting the thread gap, making sure that's all squared away. Okay. Now, of course, we beveled the needle plate like I showed you in an earlier video, how to take the uh, file and bevel the needle plate underneath where it's been hit so everything's nice and smooth there now we got it all back together and of course for this customer i told her i'd show her how to wind the bobbin and the bobbin that we like to use believe it or not is a plastic bobbin and the plastic bobbin is uh because these new ones unless you have the original that are hard to come by the plastic bobbins are uh, put into a mold they're very smooth the uh ones that are made in china now the real shiny kind of cheesy looking ones they have a little flange there on them It'll cause the thread to hang up so you always want to make sure you get a plastic bobbin if you're getting a new one and of course you put your spool over here you run it around the guide around the thread put it through from the inside out and make sure you hold it out here so you cut it off so there's no excess thread sticking out and then you can wind while you sew or you can stop and wind and sometimes i like to guide it Oops. launch the thread make sure it's even but uh that's how you wind the bobbin and of course you take it off push this down Put it in the machine and then you're ready to go after you tighten down your hand wheel and you're ready to go and this little guy is just sewing like like brand spanking new these things have an amazing uh construction so if they're locked up or they've been neglected and set forever all you do is just give them a little tlc bring them back to life and it's rare when it's not a happy ending so if you have one of these find somebody who's competent they can bring it back to life uh, you know, uh, if you want to bring it to me here in North Texas, I'll be happy to help you. Uh, threading this over here, I told you I'd show how to do that real quick. You have a thread guide inside here, a little cheat sheet inside the door. But always thread it with the presser foot lifted up. That spreads these tension discs apart. You have a guide here at the top. You bring it down. There's a little, little arm that sticks out here, a little silver arm. And you put the thread on that, bring it forward, and it'll drop right in the right slot. You can get it in the front, it'll be a mess, or in the back. You want to drop it right between those discs. Then you bring it around, and you pick up the check spring. So every time you take a stitch, that spring bounces. You put it back in behind, up to the take-up lever, right to left, down to a thread guide, thread guide, thread guide, thread guide. And then you thread it straight through, front to back. And when you set the needle, always make sure it's all the way up in, 
and the flat side goes to the back and the long groove to double check is always facing you. You can run, run, run your thumbnail up and down and make sure you've got it in correctly. You can double check because the long groove is going to be facing you. The flat side's on the back. Tension usually between three and five is the factory setting on it. And away you go. And their big horsepower or fraction horsepower motors are large, a lot of torque. They'll fly, they'll sew through stuff. Great little machines. If you get a chance to get one, 401A from Singer, big fan. Grab one if you can. Thanks.